They said, make sure you go to the bathroom first because heaps will have you laughing to the point where you will want to pee yourself. And of course, I thought this was hyperbole, but I'm sitting here with like actual tears streaming down my face right now. This is ridiculous. I sent you that message, though. That was you? That still- yeah, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm loving the chat right now. <laughs> yeah, would everyone just shut up? <laughs> yeah, everybody. Everybody's reading, too much which, make, going which on makes here, which makes for compelling a compelling podcast. It's people staring at their screens <laughs> and reading quietly. Sometimes I think I shouldn't talk before the actual podcast because I think I use up everything I need and I won't have anything left for the actual recording. <laughs> Just the beautiful sounds of everyone reading for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still amazed at this 95 liter pack, man. I got, I got to say, I just keep going back and looking at the picture. <laughs> yeah, I, seriously, I, you could so put great. another pack inside that pack. <laughs> Wait, someone was carrying a 95 liter pack? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> you were? Not recently, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll revisit this topic real quick. We were talking about this before everybody jumped on. Uh, somehow we, we got to talking about what, you know, what your... Reptar has five packs. I think I've got like four or five also. We were just comparing like who's, you know, what are the different sizes of your packs. And I've got the very first pack that I bought when I got out of the military is a 96 liter Gregory Palisade that weighs six and a half pounds empty. But, Ooh. Um, yeah, but it's a, nice. it's it's an expedition pack. It's you know it's designed. You know, it's got like a shit ton of ice axe loops on it, and it's meant for uh, you know like you're going to be 15 days between resupply and carrying 80 to 100 pounds of gear. So God. yeah, it's not the kind of thing that you want to throw on for a day hike or I don't know, say a guided <laughs> a guided trip to Machu Picchu where someone else is carrying all of your stuff, but but you're an idiot, so you're not. I uh, met a guy who had a 95 liter pack on the PCT last year. No kidding. On purpose? Yeah. On purpose. He wouldn't carry anything less than I think it was six liters of water and 30 pounds of food at okay. a time. All right. Well, that makes, I guess the water I understand, but. Uh, 30 pounds yeah. of food. 30 pounds of food. That's like two weeks. That's two yeah. weeks of food. And I met him um, about. 400 miles in and this was his fourth pack because um the straps kept breaking <laughs> how, how many miles in <laughs> Four, 400 miles in yeah okay so and, and what did it take him about uh, six and a half months to get that far i think so i think he'd been going since like 2012 you know <laughs> <laughs> okay oh man <clears throat> Hey, what, what do you say we do like an, a, an official slash unofficial start to this and then uh, and then we'll keep going. Um, so sounds good. Yeah, let's do, let's do this. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another exciting episode of Stories from the Trail. Uh, joining us tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm Green Giant, one of your hosts. We have on the line with us this evening Reptar. Hello, Reptar. Hello. Hello. And joining us from across the pond. Actually, we have two people on from across the Two different ponds this evening. Uh, to our right, <laughs> across that pond, we have Fozzie, who is... Uh, Fozzie, you're still in uh, West Sussex, correct? I am. Yes, good evening to everybody. Hello, Fozzie. Uh, Fozzie, if, if you don't recognize the trail name, Fozzie is Keith Foskett, uh, noted hiker and author. Uh, and joining us from across the other pond to our left... Uh, you, okay, so we've got three different names for you. I've got Heaps... Wilderbound <laughs> and Aisha. Is it, am I saying that right? Yeah, Aisha. Aisha? Close. Very okay. close. And you are in, is it? Uh, Christchurch, Christ- New Zealand. Christchurch, New Zealand. All right. So I knew that's where you were from. I didn't know that's where you were, were actually still located. Yes. Yeah. I moved back there um, after the PCT last time. Well, welcome home. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we all, we, and we almost have all four corners of the globe covered uh we've got uh we've got the east coast we've got uh we've got europe we've got new zealand and, and on the west coast we've got uh Tork in the dirt who was who was on the show last week uh 
and he's having some troubles uh, with his microphone, so we'll hear from him a bit later. But um, why don't we start with uh, why don't we start with Aisha Heaps? Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so I hiked uh, the PCT in 2016 and then went back again for a second time uh, in 2018. And I went northbound both times. And um, that's about it, to be honest. Uh, I've also done some hiking in Nepal, uh, the Annapurna circuit, and I'd really like to go back there as well. So I, I got a question. What compelled you to hike the PCT a second time? And did you do anything differently the second time around? Good question. Um, everyone always asks that. And I think for me, uh, I always tell them, just hike it once and see if you want to hike it again. And usually, usually they understand after the first time. I mean, some people don't. But um, for me, it was just about, uh, I thought about hiking other trails and nothing seemed as amazing as doing it again. So I thought, well, why not? That's a fair, fair enough. enough. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you do anything differently your second time oh. around? Did you bring different gear? Did you, you know, hike faster, um, slower? Hike faster. Um, but there wasn't too much change, to be honest, um, especially compared to, say, the Washington on my first hike. I probably was carrying about the same amount of gear as when I started the second. Everyone keeps asking me, why didn't I go the other way? And I just wanted to have that northbound experience one more time. Heaps, you must have put some some thought into hiking uh, another trail. I mean, you must have thought about hiking the Appalachian or maybe the Continental Divide or maybe Teararoa or something like that. So what uh, what kind of made you go back to the PCT? Why, why not do another trail? Um, I just felt like I wasn't finished with it yet. I got to the end and um Can instantly... you guys hear me? <laughs> there he is. Twerk. Oh. Hello. Oh my god. A hiker here helped me do it. It something it was something with my is he on? Yeah, I can hear him. Yeah. <laughs> you know I really want to fucking call in and talk to Heaps if I'm sitting here fishing <laughs> with my phone for fifteen minutes trying to figure out this goddamn app. <laughs> Hi Twerk. <laughs> Hi baby. <laughs> Twerk, come in. I'm I'm sitting here in Mount Laguna with some new uh PCT 2009. Uh, oh. Yeah. He doesn't need to hear me. It's fine. Yeah, I definitely can't hear Tua. It, uh... I'm teaching all these new hikers how to butt chat. Everyone else, but not Tua. I'm so proud of you. But thank you. <laughs> Did you say edit? Is it a terrible edit? Did you say? Did I what? I don't. I don't know if Fozzie can hear you, but this is just entertaining as all hell right now. I got yeah. Twerk talking about butt chugging. I got Fozzie trying to figure out why I can't hear Twerk. Oh my god! This Sorry, is I'm, I'm like crying over here. I'm I'm doing my best to minimize the chaos by saying nothing. <laughs> so, so hold on, Twerk. Explain to me what is this butt chugging thing. <laughs> Have heaps explain it. She's the one who taught me. <laughs> I didn't well, I, she is oh, the she, she yeah, is the guest of honor this evening. So so he lay it on us. Yeah, this is this yeah this oh is about goodness. you. I'm just I'm just here to to rally you up to a little bit. Make me talk about butt chugging. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Do you actually want me to explain it? It's not very G. Yeah, it'll sound better in your accent though. So you explain it. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> basically. Um, what happened in 2018 is that a hiker got so dehydrated in the desert that uh, the only way that they could um, rehydrate was actually butt chugging that water. Am I explaining it right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. the rumor we started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's, here's what, what I'm imagining. That was we got up the trail and we heard two hikers talking about it as if it really happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's here's what I'm picturing when you when you guys say butt chugging water, I'm I'm picturing somebody with a with a camel back. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're all instantly on the same page, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So And having to squeeze that, that bite valve. 
You've got to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you you definitely need two bite valves. You'd need one spare for that, wouldn't you? You want to get. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna need an assistant there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, okay, so I'm just going to throw this out there. I think if there's anybody in the chat room right now who is capable of operating a bite valve with their butt, it's probably someone named, I don't know, Twerk, maybe? You guys are full of shit. This is God. already your best episode. We're only five minutes in. Sorry, but. This is fantastic. <laughs> This, we've just taken poop talk to a whole new level. <laughs> okay, so let, so let's discuss the oh, man, let's yeah. discuss the pros and cons of, of this butt chugging technique. Let's assume this is a real okay. thing, right? So y yeah. you know that um, I guess it's kind of like um, you know ki kids these days are, are uh, I, I saw this on the news they're they're boofing <laughs> vodka, right? So you know they they'll they'll soak a tampon or something in vodka <laughs> or grain alcohol and then stick it up their butt because. The, the membrane of the, of the rectum absorbs liquids into the bloodstream much more efficiently than, say, drinking or, you know, uh, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know what else you can do with liquids, how else you can get them into you. But um, if you're dehydrated, oh, man. if you're dehydrated and, uh, and you put water, like if basically an enema, you give yourself an enema, right? And you just hold it in. Is that, is that, gonna, is that good for you? Is that going to help? Is there any... Yeah, no, I saw, I saw, I... Uh, what's his name? Bear Grylls. Bear Grylls did that. <laughs> is what? This, is this true? Yeah, there's like an episode where Bear Grylls, like, was butt chugging. <laughs> I gotta take a tan and go watch that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that, I saw that episode. He definitely did an enema. I think he was in a boat, wasn't he? Am I remembering correctly? Was he in a boat or something? <laughs> yeah. Wait, because what, was it, so... what was it for? Like, hydration? I think so, yeah. Or yeah. fun? Oh, that... <laughs> it seems like an awful lot of trouble for. I mean, I'd rather drink. It seems like an awful lot of trouble to go for a drink to stick it up your ass. But I mean, usually I just, <laughs> usually I just drink the water. You know. Yeah. I don't know exactly. what you guys do. I mean, that's one way to do it, heaps, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, was, when was the last time you went into a bar and everybody was butt chugging because the alcohol? <laughs> I mean, can you imagine walking in the bar and everybody's got the, like, their pants down and the legs up in the air and they're sticking tampons in their ass? <laughs> That's my kind of bar. <laughs> you got an address for us? I don't know how I have friends. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it could be busy. Maybe it's a, it's a good business. I, I don't know. I don't know. The butt chugger arms. <laughs> Just airing it in your accent, Fozzie, <laughs> makes it that much better. I'll have, I'll have, a, I'll have a pint of bitter, so please. Proper. Actually, you better not make it a pint. Give me a half. A pint's probably too much. <laughs> I have no idea what to say next. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the stories from the so, trail is a production of the Trek.co, Zach Davis, editor in chief. Oh my god. <laughs> Sponsored by the PCA. <laughs> oh, good lord. <sighs> All right, so uh, somebody sent me a message on Facebook today when I told them that Heaps was going to be on the show. And they said, and they said, <laughs> this is exactly, this is exactly what this person on Facebook said. They, they said, make sure you go to the bathroom first because heaps will have you laughing to the point where you will want to pee yourself. And of course I thought this was hyperbole, but I'm sitting here with like actual tears streaming down my face right now. This is ridiculous. I sent you that message though. That was you? That still, yeah, that was me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Stupid. No. So on this on on the note of butt chugging, or I guess on another note, <clears throat> Twerk, you were you, you had another question in the event that you couldn't make it for heaps. What was that question? What 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 question? It oh, was something I about ask, I said ask heaps about the pus on her uh, bear can. No, quiet you. You're telling the story. Oh. <laughs> it's so good. I'm so traumatized. So, oh God. So when I was uh, up Forrester Pass in the Sierra on the PCT last year, I thought it was a really good idea to um, to glissade down 
But the problem was is that I was wearing running shorts and I was like, oh, what if these running shorts, you know, come up and 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 that wouldn't be good. So I, I of course, put a uh, stuffed a garbage bag down my down my shorts uh, to protect my butt while I was sliding down. Um, but all that did was lift up the shorts and so that both ass cheeks were exposed um, and then slid the whole way down and realized two days later that I'd ripped layers and layers and layers of skin off my butt. Ah. Yeah. Wow. Um, how much later? It was, I think it took about two days before I realized the extent of it. I thought I'd just done like a nice, you know, a light graze. Okay. Um, but it wasn't at all. It was horrible. Um, and then uh, I think the story he actually wants me to tell is that we were all sitting around the campfire in the Sierra. Um, we'd stopped early. And I thought that perhaps now that my um, <laughs> now that I thought my my butt had uh, crusted over, you know, started to heal, I could sit down on my bear canister. Um, so I sat there and was just enjoying actually being able to sit down after quite a few days of not being able to sit down at all. And um, when I stood up, I think it was Twerk actually pointed <laughs> out that there was my whole bear oh. canister was just covered in a layer of pus. Well, I was really confused because I was like, God, did you fucking piss on your bear can? What the hell is going on? And then she's like, oh my God, it's pus. I'm like, you're fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it was so good. So. That, must then, have taken re- ages. that must have taken ages to heal, surely. If you're hiking took, every day. I well, think like, it took about three, three weeks. weeks. She was three like, weeks of not being able to sit down. <laughs> She was like, Twerk, can I have your gold bond again? So I just gave it to her and she retreated behind a tree and we're just going to town with the gold bond. <laughs> I was trying to dry it out. Yeah. The whole time then, she's wearing this like trash bag as a dress to like air freaks <laughs> out. I had to air it out. I thought I could dry it out, you know? We I also couldn't even, I couldn't sleep on my back. I couldn't even sleep on my back. It was horrible. <laughs> Oh my god, so great. Did you learn any lessons from that experience? Um, <laughs> yeah. Um I guess the lesson that I really learned from there that I haven't told you about was the fact that um don't think that you can use bits of toilet seat covers as um as uh, like a bandage on your bum because they'll just stick and you'll have to rip them off. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I thought oh, it was yeah. going to be like like grease paper, like baking paper, and it would just come off. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to rip it off, <laughs> and then I, I slept. And then I, in the middle of the night, I I uh, filled my hands with uh, hand sanitizer, thinking that that would would uh, no! dry it out, and slapped it onto my bum, and then had to <laughs> had to bite down on my fleece because I was just screaming internally. Oh my god! <laughs> Everyone camped on the next ridge. Is like, is that is that coyotes? Do we hear? Is that wolves? <laughs> no, no, that's just uh, somebody ripping scabs off their ass. I think this is oh, potentially yeah. the potential got to the, the, the be the most, the most um, disgusting episode we've had yet, and we haven't even gone on to the poop thing. Yet. Oh my god! No <laughs> kidding. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. No, it's uh, yeah. Okay, this is great. Need to be told. The first mistake was inviting me to like chime in, so that's your, all your fault. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, on you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so not a mistake. <laughs> I, I love what's yeah. happening right now. Um, Definitely not. Yeah. One, one of the, okay. So one of the things I remember after you know, after my through hike and talking to so many people who have, you know, just being around hikers in general is how disgusting we can be. Right. I mean, you 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 know you hear about this. And experiencing it in real time is just kind of, it's kind of mind boggling how gross we get. Um, and I remember when I, when I came back from the AT, I was doing things like just, you know, blowing snot rockets and just wiping my hands on my pants or, you know, just <laughs> stopping to pee wherever I was, even if it was the middle of an escalator and just, you know, <laughs> Hey, you gotta go, you gotta go. Um, but it's, it's kind of, it's, I just, I love seeing this unfold in real time. It just, t- it's taken me back. It's, it's reminding me of, you know, what it's like to be out there with your trail family. Um, and I want to ask you, you, uh, and Twerk both, I assume, and maybe you said this and I missed it. Did you guys meet on the PCT during your first or second through hike? It was my uh, second. Your second. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, uh-huh. it we, was my second attempt. <laughs> right. 
<clears throat> so uh, were, were you guys uh were you trail family did you stick around stick together for you know a long time or you know no you... baby couldn't keep up <laughs> which one of you is baby aka <laughs> me oh, okay <laughs> Okay, because I was going to say there's definitely a closeness here, and I was just wondering what uh, you know what you guys' relationship was was based on, like how well you know each other, and you know. we we just always kept in contact like through Instagram yes. before, like be, like uh, while well, I was hiking in seventeen for like two months, because then, then I was like fuck this. Um, but then when I decided to go back, Heaps had already said she was going back, so we like talked about. <laughs> well, I knew I inevitably she'd catch up to me at some point because. Mm-hmm. Um, baby likes town a lot and i'm not <laughs> trying to push fucking 50 miles like she that bitch does so uh <laughs> <laughs> okay so semi semi serious yes. question here um semi serious <laughs> question why are we like this why are we like what like this like disgusting humans yes. yeah i don't know because it feels good to finally just say what's on your fucking mind and not worry about what people think mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's how i feel about it for me through hiking just finally made me like not care what other people think. Not that I was intentionally trying to be gross, but I have a very disgusting sense of humor. And I think, yeah, through hiking just made me like kind of just be more authentic and embrace that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if they don't like it. I, I can shit. totally <laughs> agree with that. I, I don't think I'd even talk about poop before I hiked the first time. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm just like, want to hear it? Want to hear a story? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Like wow. I'll be I'll be on like first dates and be like yeah this one time when I like hit my pants <laughs> yeah. in the bed on my through hike but it was like in a town you know and they're like what the fuck are you talking about like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like listen if you're not gonna talk about shit like we don't have anything here <laughs> yeah well I think that's the perfect segue to ask uh, the next question which would be heaps what is your best poop story oh god um. You've really hit home on two of my like most embarrassing trail moments. Um, so my first hike, um, I was I was kind of shy uh, starting it in a little bit. Like I wouldn't talk about poo, and I just thought that everyone uh, knew what they were doing, and I didn't. So I was maybe about two hundred miles in, and uh, I was running. I was doing a little bit of trail running because I'm an idiot, and I uh, tripped and twisted my ankle really badly um, and ended up hobbling all the way to camp that night. And then uh, I guess my stomach was kind of just put off a little bit because I was so stressed out about my ankle that in the middle of the night I woke up and um, had this sudden urge to need to poo. And um, I was uh, <laughs> I was um, trying to get my shoe on my swollen foot uh, and I was halfway in and out of the tent when it it just happened without me. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so so you dropped a deuce in your tent? <laughs> no, 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 it was in my pants. Okay, okay. a little bit more classy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on, I'm not that disgusting. So, so how do you, she was, how do you? She was at a body slide, so it just made sense. <laughs> <laughs> so so how do you how did you manage to uh remedy that situation after it happened you just oh, uh, you just butt chug it back up in there and- i did oh, yeah fuck. i just bit down on that bite valve and it just <laughs> straight back up um, <laughs> um i uh i ended up well because it was the middle of the night there was a full moon at that time, well, two full moons, if you count me, <laughs> and I uh, walked out of my tent with, like, my pants <laughs> round my ankles, <clears throat> and um, there were other people at the campsite, so I'm still hoping they didn't see anything, and I had to, like, run behind a bush and, like, sort everything out, and uh, and then I sort of got my sleep tights that I'd been using in my underwear and had to um, just ball it up in my bag, you know, in my pack. <laughs> Wow. The next morning was everybody like, Heaps, why are you hiking in that? <laughs> yeah, they were. <laughs> yeah. Why are you no, wearing your sleeping it. clothes? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't wearing my sleeping clothes. I could put on my running shorts, thank goodness. And oh, then okay. I had to just carry it with me. Carry the shame. <laughs> you know? Wow. Do you want me to make it worse as well? Oh, yes. I can make it worse. Please. Oh, please um, do. 
Oh God! You know all Give my secrets you. now. I hope everyone thinks I'm disgusting. Um, <laughs> so I guess the shock of falling over had um really done a, a lot to my body, and so uh, the next, <laughs> uh, the next morning I was walking along and realised I'd got my period, and um, <laughs> but I didn't have anything for it. So, oh, uh, as they say, I was only wearing one sock. Oh, wow. <laughs> Can I just say, if, 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 if all this happened on your first hike on the PCT, I'm really, yeah. really surprised you went back for a second time. <laughs> I know. Right. What was I thinking? I love it. <laughs> it was just like the worst three things that could possibly happen to someone all happening in a row. Just to yeah, this very, so like, kind of shy, kind of timid hiker. <laughs> oh. And what, what section of the trail was this? <laughs> um... It was, uh, I know exactly where it was. Um, it was the part from uh, that really nice flat bit from Big Bear to uh, the Cajon Pass McDonald's. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my God, that was can great. I, can I ask you about your book, what your book's about? Presumably it's about your hike, is it? Yeah, so I'm, I'm writing one right now. We're trying to write one. And um, it is about my hike. I haven't decided whether I want to include the first one as well or just just do the second. Um, I did, did full notes for the second while I was hiking. Um, so, yeah, that's a bit easier to remember all the details. Sure. And how's it going? Uh, good. I think it's about, for me, it's about formulating um, my thoughts into something that someone else would actually want to read. <laughs> That makes sense. Find, finding what the actual story is. Okay. Do you have any uh, release date in mind? Of No, not yet. Not yet. I'm still just sort of vomiting all of my um, stories onto, onto my laptop and, and trying to sort it all out. Are you planning on self, yes. self-publishing? Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, um, I would... I, I kind of would be interested in looking for a publisher, um, but self-publishing is something I've also looked into, and that looks interesting as well. We have a- also Green Green Giant was saying that you uh, have an amazing blog going on. Where can uh, the listeners check that out at? Oh yeah, I need to update. Um, it's wilderbound dot com. Uh, so I was uh, initially trying to blog my entire hike last year. But um, I only got up to about day three and then ended up just taking the rest as notes on my phone because it was just too much um, to do from the trail. Is the uh, butt chugging and butt puss mentioned in said blog? Is it? No. <laughs> no, not yet. No, <laughs> not yet, but maybe I should do a separate post. You're hearing it here <laughs> first, folks. I'll post it on mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, I just wrote a story about it in the book, on my book, just per, just that. It's the cover. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was actually, that was going to be my next question, is is Heaps in Twerk's book? Oh, you know, she wrote, uh, Heaps wrote a piece for the Hiker Trash Vogue book. Oh, okay. It's lovely. What What's it about? Are you allowed to say? Yeah, Heaps, Heaps you can tell. Yeah, uh, it's kind of about uh, what the trail taught me, almost, right? Or just yeah. sort of what I learned, what I learned was, doing it the second time. <clears throat> what I love about it, too, is very it was very short and simple and kind of like, it was kind of like uh, one of our posts on Instagram, where it's like, for Instagram, maybe it's a long post, um, but it's uh, kind of, you know, how, you know, she we'll post a photo and then write about the day and go into the, right. these really beautiful descriptors. Um, but it's also very blunt and honest. And that's kind of what her story is. That's why I wanted her to write something for the book. Cause she, I mean, she has such a great way with words and is describing what the trail means. And um, that's why I was like, bitch, you got to write a book because she just, Aww. I think, I think she describes the trail <laughs> so beautifully and in a way that, hikers can understand if they can't put their feelings into words in a way that people who never want to do a through hike can understand but still kind of get a glimpse of what what it's like just blushing over here twerk 
<laughs> I know. See, hey, see, I say nice things every once in a while. You do. <laughs> I, can, I, I can be pleasant for five minutes. <laughs> Aww. So I've got a question. You know, since Torque is talking about how well you can describe a trail, I'm really curious to hear about the Annapurna circuit and what oh, what was yeah. that experience like for you? Yeah, so that one was interesting um, because what I'd actually done is I'd done the PCT and I was still in that sort of PCT afterglow. Um, and then I decided to do um, a couple of months of bike touring across Asia and then got a bit disillusioned with that and ended up uh, wanting to hike again. So we were like, why not go to Nepal? Um, so we chose the Annapurna circuit because you don't need a guide for it. Um, you don't need a porter. You can just do it in your own time. And it was the off season as well, um, which meant that it wasn't as crowded. So what was that like? Did you did you fly into where did you fly into? Is that Kathmandu or? Yeah, you fly you... into Kathmandu. Yep. And then you've got to take this really cramped, strange bus uh, for about nine hours or something to the start of it. What's the elevation like? Uh, it's it's actually part of it is has got the highest mountain pass in the world. Oh um, wow! Yeah, let me just. Uh, it's called Throng La. I'll find out how tall it is. Oh, sorry, Throng La. I'm not sure. I'm I've probably absolutely murdered that. Do you, do, um, um, do you mind if we if we backtrack just a tiny little bit? And for the benefit of listeners who might not know, can we say what the Annapurna Circuit is? Uh, you know, like where it is, how long it is. Just a, a quick overview. Yeah, sure. It's it's in Nepal, um, in the Annapurna Range. Uh, so you kind of do a big loop around there. Um, and I think it's, a, I could be wrong, but I think it's about 200 or 250 miles okay. long. It's supposed to be one of the most, if not the most beautiful trails in the world, is it not? Yes, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I would say that it's closer to being a cultural trail than, say, the PCT, which is definitely more of a scenic trail. Um, there's only a few days uh, where you get sort of wilderness a wilderness experience or or views like that. Um, the rest of it is going through small villages. Oh, so is it? Are are you actually setting up a tent and camping at night? No, or are you... no. So it's like Camino style. Okay. Um, you stay in tea houses, and you get fed, you know, three meals a day at these tea houses. So you barely even have to carry any food with you. I would imagine they're really cheap as well, are they not? Oh, it's so cheap. I think yeah. I did it for about $20 US a day, and that was f full meals and accommodation. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's so cheap. The people are very kind. It's so well set up um, for tourists. Really easy to navigate. <laughs> it, it's so, a really good hike. So tell me a little bit about these tea houses. What was that like? You know, what were the accommodations yeah. like? And, you know, how... How are the people like? Was it hard to converse with them? Um, no. So English is pretty good. Um, they get a lot of tourists. It's an incredibly popular trail. Um, we were there on the off season though, so we maybe only saw two or three people each day. I'm sure if you go during peak season, it will just be almost lines of people doing it and a lot of um, jeeps kicking up dust and, and everything while you're walking the roads. Um but the tea houses are like basic accommodation. You can get some nicer ones, but it's sort of a stone hut, almost like Game of Thrones looking in a lot of areas. And uh, you get like quite a hard bed with a duvet and a pillow. Um, and then meals wise, um, sometimes the accommodation is free as long as you eat all of your meals at this same guest house. Oh, interesting. And Ooh. they all have exactly the same menu. Which is? So... Yeah, what do you eat? Yeah, so um, the the government issues them a tourist menu almost, and um, on that menu is stuff like fried rice and fried noodles and uh, these really yum fried potatoes with a whole bunch of vegetables in them. Um, by the end of it, it 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 gets a little bit old, but um, at the start, it's delicious. Did you um, uh, did you get ill at all? I know a lot yes. of people go to India in that part of the world to get, uh, get some yes. sort of stomach. Yes, I, I got sick again and again and again and again and again. I think I got sick about five times within a month. Oof. Um, 
like they see, isn't it? They see uh, Nepal and that neck of the woods in India. They've got the most, uh, the strongest. Um, I would describe this really badly, but their stomachs are really strong because there's hygiene isn't perhaps what yeah. we're sort of used to out here, but because yep, for sure. it, they've got really strong constituent stomachs. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, in most countries that I've been through um, in Asia, you can eat the street food no problem at all, as long as you're just slightly careful about hygiene. Um, but in Nepal, you're encouraged to never, ever eat the street food, only eat it from restaurants. Um, there's there's quite a few issues with travellers in Nepal getting quite sick. Yeah. Mm. So in terms of the, the sleeping accommodations in these little Game of Thrones-esque stone uh, huts, did what kind of gear were you carrying? Did you have like a sleeping bag? Because I'm sure it gets really cold up there. Yeah. Or so what? I took my I took my sleeping bag. Um, it's a ten degree, um, and it gets freezing. The higher you get, um, well, Trong La, Trong La, I can't remember how to say it. Um, is seventeen thousand seven hundred feet. Wow. So yeah. So by the time we got to the top, and we were on the off season as well, so there was snow. Um, we were just freezing. It's just so cold, and and because um, energy is kind of scarce up there, or it costs it costs a lot for them to heat the guest houses. Um, you'd only actually get the fire on in the main room from about six pm onwards. So the rest of the time, you're kind of just sitting there shivering. As for the altitude, did you need to spend a few days uh, acclimating to that altitude? Yeah, we did. So luckily, we both got sick at the same time, um, so we could uh, acclimatize. Okay. <laughs> During that time, um, that sound I like got fun. quite altitude sick the night before the pass, um, but somehow made it over anyway. So. Okay. Is it um, is it is that the highest you've ever been? Altitude yeah. altitude wise, that is. Definitely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> both. <no. laughs> okay. What on earth do you mean, Green Giant, by that remark? <laughs> <laughs> totally don't. I don't follow you at all. No, oh, he's lost me there. <laughs> <laughs> so how many uh, days Nepal in total? Is, Nepal or India or the Himalayas is definitely part of the world. I need, to, um, I need to get out there. It looks absolutely stunning. It's incredible. It is a really, really good experience, and it's so cheap. Yeah. So what... I've got a couple questions. The first question is, how long did it take you round trip to do the whole circuit? I think it took us about two weeks. Um, we we didn't do the very end section um, because of the off season and the 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 towns were almost not not shut down, but there were there wasn't as much availability for accommodation and everything. So we maybe didn't do about. Oh, 50 miles? When you say off-season, what time of year was it that you were there? I'm pretty, yeah, so it was February, March, I think. So I that's kind of when the snow's thawing out. Is, okay. I think, isn't peak hiking season out there? Doesn't it start in April? And does it, don't they have two hiking seasons? One's April, isn't the other one like October or something? Yeah, yeah, something like that. The main one, though, is just incredibly crowded, apparently. I think the main one might be in um, October. And when you say, I mean, when you say crowded, do you have any idea what sort of numbers were on? We're on the trail. Is it just like, you know, is it ridiculously crowded? Is, is everywhere full and... I've heard it's ridiculously crowded, yeah. Yeah. And also they, they changed the um, the actual route of the... Um, or not the route, they, they changed the access to the actual route um, a few years ago and um, installed a lot of Jeep roads. Um, so you're constantly just getting passed by people in these jeeps and they they kick up stones and dust and apparently it's just not quite as enjoyable as doing it a little bit at a at a different time okay what what if anything do you wish you had known prior to going into the annapurna circuit Mm, that it wasn't going to be the pct that it was going to be way different and that that's that's something i can appreciate as well (laughs) different how is there is there any like word of advice that you would give somebody if they're like all right look i'm going to go do this like for the annapurna yeah oh 
Um, I guess the advice that I'd give them is just um, don't expect it to be a, a to be at a complete wilderness experience. You're never going to really feel detached from town. Um, but also just take it as slow as you want. There's no need to rush there. You can stop at three o'clock in the afternoon and just hang out at a tea house and, and meet some interesting people. That sounds lovely. It yeah, is it lovely. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question about uh, about the hike itself. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, the AT has Katahdin as its big finish. And, you know, when you're in the PCT, you've got your, your eyes on the prize. You're thinking about that Canadian border, Mexico. Um, is there anything like that on the Annapurna? Like you're, everyone's trying to get to a thing or is it just a big circle and you can start wherever? Um, so it is just a circle. You can kind of start wherever and a lot of people get the more boring parts or the parts that people don't think are worth it. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people finish at the pass, which is probably, I don't know how many miles from the actual end of the circuit, but that's kind of the the, the peak, you know? That's that's the Katahdin of the mm. trail. Okay. So I've heard the term Kiwi used. Uh-huh. Can you tell me about that? Yeah. So a lot of people have asked me if they can call me a Kiwi, and you can. It's not offensive at all. It's um it's like a endearing term for New Zealanders. Um but the Kiwi is a, a flightless endangered bird from New Zealand uh, that can't fly (laughs) and is basically blind. And for some reason, we've been known as Kiwis. Kiwis are blind? Oh, like pretty, pretty bad at seeing. They're nocturnal. It's kind of quite sad. I don't know why. Well, it is sad. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God, I'm going to (laughs) cry. Oh, my goodness. What have I done? I'm so sorry. All right. Also... Also, being a New Zealander, I mean, you have the Te Araroa right there, yes. right? Yes. Yes. So, uh, I'm kind of curious why why go do the Annapurna circuit and the PCT twice when you have the Te Araroa right there? What's keeping you from wanting to do that? Because you never really appreciate what's always there, right? Yeah, I, I, I could kind of <laughs> see that. I think it's always. Um, I think you always consider the best hikes and the best experiences are in other countries. You never really consider the country you're in. I mean, we have some great hikes mm-hmm. in the UK, but I mean, uh, you know, I went to the states twice to, to do two big hikes, and there's there's great hikes in Europe. And I think you, you kind of leave the stuff at home until maybe not necessary to last, but you kind of always know it's there. So, mm-hmm. no sort of real sort of rush to do it. For sure. And a a lot of people talk about um, how brutal the TA is. Um, Not that that's putting me off. I really do want to do it. And it's definitely in my sights in the next year or the the next couple of years for sure. I'm really interested by it. But uh, it it hasn't got the most favorable um, stories about it. Karen, do you want to share some of those stories that you've heard? Yeah, sure. So some people really enjoy it. Um, but also it's quite a young, it's a very young trail. Um, and the person who created it, um, this might just be a rumor, but the person that created it wasn't really much of a hiker. So it's definitely more of a cultural heritage trail than say your traditional through hiking trail. Uh, that means you get like a lot of road walking, a lot of, um, crossing private farm property without any views or, um, without, you know, much, much of a trail. Um, it also, doesn't go through a lot of the most beautiful parts of New Zealand. Um, and I'm not sure whether that was just a con- like a consent issue or whether that was on purpose because of the heritage, uh, you know, the, the places of significance that they wanted to, to put it through. Um, so basically what people tell me is that it's, it's a lot of road walking, a lot of meandering through not so beautiful areas with a lot of mud and, and a lot of um, a lot of struggle. Yeah, I hear a lot about I hear a lot about the mud sections and the boggy sections and clambering mm-hmm. up muddy banks and all that sort of thing. But I mean, you're going to get that on any, tra- any trail, aren't you? It's, it's going to be muddy at some point. Oh, for sure, <laughs> for sure. And it's definitely become more interesting um, the more I hear about it, even if it does sound like type two fun the whole way. <laughs> Sounds like it's getting busier as well. It's getting much busier. 
yep. yeah really 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 busy um not from new zealanders though not in a lot of kiwis like it um it's mostly french german and american oh my god are the germans out there already <laughs> they're, they're everywhere. Oh, god damn it well that's the te arara off the list <laughs> Them. I mean, the French are okay. I don't mind the French. But, I mean, if, yeah. if there's a hike, if there's a hiking trail, German people will sniff it out. Yeah, they what, will. What do you have against the Germans, Fazi? Nothing. I mean, apart from the fact we beat them in the second world. Um, I've got nothing against the Germans at all. It's just an English German thing. <laughs> We always joke about it. It's nothing serious. It's just a bit of fun. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of Germans out on the Appalachian Trail when I hiked it. For sure. Like, like every other bubble, there was like at least two Germans in it, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, there was a couple of Germans on the AT when I was out there as well. Um, There's lots on the PCT as well. So it's I wanna... really popular. I want to I want to go back to the the kiwi thing for for just a second uh, the 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 animal not the person and um, <laughs> <laughs> so okay so I'm looking at this I'm looking at pictures of kiwis people are putting those up in the chat and I'm thinking like this is a really cute it's kind of an adorable weird looking thing and if I if yeah. I were to see a kiwi I've never seen a kiwi in in real life if I saw one I would stop and just like oh I gotta take pictures of this I gotta tell my friends I saw a kiwi blah, blah. you know now you see a kiwi and you're like oh yeah a kiwi right. So no, I, I've never seen one. Oh, so they're not that common. Oh wait, no, I've seen one in a zoo, maybe like half half a leg. Um, so they're endangered. Oh, maybe I I missed that part. I'm sorry. Okay, I was picturing them they like look, being like squirrels, they like they're everywhere cute because they haven't got. It looks more like fur and not feathers. Yeah, that's yeah. They're yeah. adorable. Yeah. So I guess I I guess what I, what I'm getting at with that failed example is uh you know when you came to the u.s uh, or nepal and hiked there what what uh wildlife did you see that made you stop and say oh i've never seen you know oh, all of them oh my yeah. gosh okay so i love marmots like marmots, marmots are like oh my goodness the <laughs> cutest the cutest thing and squirrels okay. but also marmots okay yeah um so i think oh and also Man, uh, seeing a, a bear for the first time was pretty incredible. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about. Because your first experience with a bear was probably either a brown or a grizzly, right? It was a brown bear. Definitely not a grizzly. I've never seen one of those. Thank Still, goodness. Okay. <laughs> okay. So so no real fear then, just more of kind of like amazement? Yeah, just amazed. Okay. Like maybe I should have been more scared, but I, it was, they're gorgeous. They're such beautiful animals. And just so different from anything that you'd see here. Heaps, you don't get any, um, uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I don't think you get any, you have no snakes, you have no poisonous spiders, and generally no animals that can kind of harm you in New Zealand. The the wildlife is kind of like kind, for want of a better word. Yeah, you're right. Yep, yep, we don't have any animals that are going to jump out and kill you. Maybe like a wild pig. But I've never seen one. <laughs> so, yeah, we don't have any snakes. We have a couple of um, poisonous spiders, but they're not going to kill you. Uh, yeah, and it, it's pretty predator-free in terms of towards humans. Drop. Sounds uh, New Zealand sounds like a nice place. Um, do you get any Germans out there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there is one. <laughs> there is one danger. <laughs> Oh my god! You must have. You, I mean, on a, on a serious note, you, you must have some of the um, the best hiking in the world out there. Though. I mean, it looks absolutely amazing, New Zealand. It's gorgeous. It's it's really um it's really brutal in a in a good way. So it's more like say the AT, uh, in terms of terrain. You're gonna go if you if they think you should go straight up a mountain, you're gonna go straight there. Yeah. You're not gonna switch back ever. Um. They will just send you straight up there with all the rocks and the roots and mud, and it's pretty. Make really, really tests you in New Zealand. It's quite um, an extreme of not an extreme climate, but an extreme of climates as well, isn't it? Like the north of the North Island, almost tropical, and like the south of the South Island is more kind of a uh, well, kind of like an AT climate, I suppose. 
Yeah, you're right. So the North Island can be tropical right up the top. Um, but apart from that, it's more the North Island's more um panic and rugged, a lot of really um gorgeous, rough coastline. Uh and then the South Island is more sort of turquoise lakes and majestic mountains and um a bit more of a calm climate. Um but in terms of weather, uh since we're two islands, that's what's gonna kill you rather than a wild animal. Have you got or any plans to do the te- 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 Yeah, I was thinking about it at the end of this year. Um, if I can scrape the money together. Start season starts in November, I think. Is that right? Something like that? October, November? Yeah, I'd probably start in December or early January. So I just realized, you know, talking about the beauty of New Zealand. So I guess it was so beautiful that they shot Lord of the Rings there, did they not? Yeah, they did. Like, don't you guys have, like, a hobbit town there? Oh, we're all hobbits. <laughs> we all live when in little... When you're not being Kiwis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've got the hairiest feet. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been to the little hobbit village? I haven't. A lot of my friends have, though, and apparently it's adorable. But I've been to some of the places that they shot. Um, So there's a place called... Uh, well, actually, Mount Doom is um, quite a popular hiking area. So it's actually called Mount uh, Narahoe. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, so that's that's a really huge tourist attraction here. It's probably one of the most popular hikes in New Zealand. I'm curious to know if, um, if, if asking a Kiwi whether or not they've been to the Hobbit Town, is that anything like asking every American if they've been to the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you get that a lot? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Okay. I think, yeah, I get asked about the Hobbit a lot. Okay. Yeah, it's fair enough. It's it's really associated with New Zealand. I mm-hmm. mean, you see tourists here just purely because of Lord of the Rings all the time. Mm-hmm. There's Lord of the Rings themed tours absolutely everywhere. The group that I was with actually had a loose plan to hike the Te Araroa in full Lord of the Rings cosplay. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, who were you who were you with? Because I hiked with a group of people that were also planning to do that. <laughs> um, this makes me so happy that there's more than one <laughs> group of people out there that are thinking about this. Wait, um, where did you meet them? Where did you say you hiked I, with them? I Okay, so I I was on the PCT in 2017. And um, it w- there was a group of about nine of us going through the Sierra. And yeah. uh, one of them was my girlfriend at the time. And there was a, a bunch of other folks that we had met up with. And yeah, we just, I mean, we were getting like really into planning it, you know, <laughs> for mm-hmm. a while. But I don't know Then for whatever reason, it just, the idea just kind of fizzled out. So I'm, I'm really hoping that this other crew of people that, you know, actually have the motivation to pull it off. Well, if you ever do pick up the idea, there's about five more dudes who would be very interested in joining you and could probably complete the fellowship. <laughs> that is exactly what I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jules did ask a question, which is fairly obvious and that nobody has asked yet, in that how did you get your trail name, Heaps? Oh, I haven't even got a good story for it. It's just that I'm from New Zealand and, and everyone thought it was hilarious when I'd say instead of a lot. That's all. Oh. So it's basically just getting teased and then it turns into a trail name. Can't you invent a better story for it? <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> that's okay. so annoying because everyone's like, oh, oh, tell me your trail story. It must be good. And I'm like, it, it's really not. I like my trail name, but it's just just because I've got a weird accent. <laughs> okay, here's one. Um, we all know that June 21st is Hike Naked Day, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. Is it December 21st uh, in the Southern? Must be. Do you, Do you have a Hike Naked Day? Well, no one really celebrates it here that I know of. Maybe this is something you could start. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I wouldn't want to do it at the same time in America. I'd probably die. <laughs> but we'll get, I, I could be the trailblazer for that. We'll, we'll send Twerk down and we'll, we'll get him on it. Perfect. Oh, my God. I got a question. Okay. So <laughs> you sound surprised. On the, episode, on the episode of The Simpsons, there was 
<laughs> an episode where our toilet water does go the right the wrong way. Is that what you're wondering? Okay. So so yes, that is exactly what I was wondering. So <laughs> your toilet it goes clockwise or counterclockwise? Counter. Well, which one does your way? Which one does your? T- all right, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody's going to the bathroom now. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear it. Oh my god, that was so lackluster. My toilet water just like went straight down. Hold on. <laughs> Were you sitting those, on the those, toilet those, those this whole time? Effects, no, I, I ran into the bathroom with my phone. Sure. <laughs> I've been taking the longest poop ever. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> poop talk while pooping. So yeah, our, our water goes the other way. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. All right, that's all I got, guys. <laughs> okay. That's fine. <laughs> so I, I, I think this is due to something called the Coriolis effect, which is also why cyclones spin counterclockwise while hurricanes spin clockwise. Really? Isn't the Coriolis effect something to do with um, snipers as well? When they're taking long-range shots, they have to take the Coriolis effect into account. Oh, I haven't, I haven't oh, yeah. heard that. Yeah, when that's a thing. Nine. I don't quite yeah. know how it works, but it's something to do with the rotation of the Earth. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> if yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, Green Giant, why do you not know about this? You were in the military. I wasn't a sniper. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, you guys are all snipers. <laughs> yeah, every every Marine is the rifleman, right? <laughs> I, because I never had to shoot anything so far away that I needed to account for the rotation of the Earth to hit it. That's why. <laughs> Amateur. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. So, oh, hey, look at that. Bunny uh, just put in the chat. The reason the toilet goes clockwise in the Northern Hemisphere and counterclockwise in the Southern Hemisphere is because of the Coriolis effect. You're welcome. Congratulations, Bunny. I, I wasn't I, I I wasn't reading that uh, when I said it either, so we both came up with that on our own. Um, Bunny wins a prize tonight. Bunny, um, and I mean that, Bunny is actually going to win a prize tonight. Every once in a while, we give away gear on the show, and for just for being active in the chat and super helpful, uh, we're going to send Bunny uh, a set of Gore-Tex over mittens, courtesy of Etowah Gear. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, Bunny, send me a message in the chat with your address, and I'll get these out in, into, uh, or, oh, she has poor circulation. Well, we'll maybe we'll pull <laughs> something else out of the prize bag then. Um, <laughs> no, actually, Gore-Tex over mittens would be perfect for someone with poor circulations. It'll keep your hands warm. That's a good prize. Yeah, send me a, send me a note in the, uh, in the chat with your address, and I'll get that out into the mail uh, this weekend. Didn't Bunny win something last time I was on? Uh, that was Earth King Boomy, which rhymes with Bunny, sort of. Okay. Yep. So, sorry, I didn't. <laughs> trying to make it speak. Cool. All right. So, I, I have a question that comes from Facebook. Uh, I made a couple of posts today announcing our, our chat, and uh, so people who couldn't make it sent in questions. And this comes from Janet Major Fairy Toe. Hope I'm saying that right. And she says, if I could ask heaps a question besides what's the story behind her trail name, which we just heard, I would ask her if she could describe the differences in the cultures when it comes to American long distance hikers and New Zealander long distance hikers. In other words, Ooh, are there things that's a we, good question. Are there things we do differently and or the same? Smiley face. Yeah. Um, there's definitely a different. Um, so I love meeting other Kiwi hikers on the trail. It's really nice. It's it's like being home for just a moment. Um, I think that uh, I guess, and, and not to like toot, toot New Zealanders' horns, but um, I think that if I meet a Kiwi hiker on, on trail overseas, um, they're more than likely going to make it to the end unless something horrendous happens. I think there's a real uh, stubbornness about us. And also, okay. it, it, maybe it's the fact that we had to travel so far to get there. But um, I think in terms of determination and, and being very stubborn about making it to the end, that would be a huge difference between the the, the two different um, sets of hike. Uh, in terms of personality, um, Kiwis can be a little bit standoffish, maybe. Um, we're a bit more reserved than Americans. Uh, and Americans will say exactly what they mean to your face all the time, which Looking is nice. Looking at you, like, twerk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I actually enjoy it though. It's really nice. Um, they've, they've, they're unashamed of their own personality is the way that I'd put it. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's fair. Whereas I think, I think in, in Kiwi culture, it's a bit more, um, we're a little bit more reserved. It's like, don't draw too much attention mm-hmm. to yourself. Um, don't you're, say what you're, you're good at. Like Always be humble. Maybe similar to the the English mindset, actually. Yeah, I think uh, I think we share. Um, we definitely share similarities. Yeah, and humor wise, English and Kiwis share a lot of humor. Yeah, that's the thing that I noticed. Not only when I was over there, but also when I'm writing stuff. I write a lot of stuff that uh, is it, a bit kind of a dry humor, and and. Mm-hmm with all due respect to the Americans, they just don't get it. They think I'm actually being serious. And it's, uh, put it this way, if you're not careful with writing, it's really hard to, it's really easy to offend yeah. um, American readers because they don't they don't kind of get the dry humour thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I would get asked multiple times a day if I was serious. So basically I could convince Americans of anything, anything at all, and they would just believe me. And, and I don't know why. Maybe it's just that sort of dry slightly sarcastic humor that sometimes doesn't translate as well or maybe they can't understand what i'm saying because of my accent i, think- I don't think it translates at all to be honest but um <laughs> <laughs> no that being said there were a lot of americans that did share that dry humor but i found that they'd grown up on english comedy a lot of the time yeah so i'm i'm actually i i think i consider myself more more of a fan of British style humor than American style humor. And I think part mm-hmm. of it is, um, I think Stephen Fry explained this once and I'm, I'm stealing his words when I say this, but they, he said that the difference was that in um, American humor is based on, um, you know, like, Hey, I'm a smart ass or like, I'm the hero or I'm going to say something funny. And British, at least British style humor seems to be based more on like I showed up at the party and I forgot my pants you know like it's it's yeah. all about the, yeah, the embarrassment totally of the jo- the person who's telling the joke or or self-deprecation is that's... massive like it's the it's it's what most humor in in New Zealand and England as well would be based on I think um whereas mm-hmm. I I read a study about it and uh, they say that American humor is more likely to be I'm looking like the good person above this other person almost so it's it's like a humor where you get a get to one up on someone Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. versus making fun of yourself the good thing about self-deprecation as well is you get to take the piss out of anybody as long as you can take the piss out of yourself it kind of balances it out a little bit yes exactly (laughs) So this kind of—I love that expression. Take the piss out yeah. of someone. <laughs> <laughs> there was one um, phrase was that quick, I kept. Can I just go back a bit? Because there was a question. Um, uh, where is it gone? Oh, from Chris, Chris Benson. Benson. That's the one. To yeah. you, heaps. So I'm not sure if this is a good question, but how did you get over your shyness on the PCT? Was there something I missed about shyness or? Yeah, so um, I was pretty shy when I first started the trail uh, the first time in 2016. I mean, I could chat to people and meet people, but I was still like pretty timid in terms of um, expressing myself probably. Um, And I think the way that I got over that was just, uh, to be honest, the the trail gave me a lot of confidence. It kind of made me feel like I was good at something. Not that I thought that I was bad at bad at everything but it it gave me something to um, work towards and be proud of and feel like I could actually do something athletic that was um, worthwhile. Were you surprised to be good at it? Oh sorry. Were you surprised to be good at it? Yes. Yeah very surprised. I'm not a naturally very athletic person so um, the fact that I could keep up with people and 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 basically learn and, and know what I was doing quite quickly. Um, that really surprised me. Heaps, have you got another hike planned or? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I feel like I'm going to get jumped on when I say this, but I'm considering hiking the PCT for a third time. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know that doesn't make you a triple crowner, doesn't it? Doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It definitely does. <laughs> 
I'm doing the triple crown, but just one trail at a time. <laughs> <laughs> the triple triple. Okay. So um, and when are you planning on? I'm guessing was it this year or next year? Next or year. Or you don't know? Huh? Next year. Next year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. If, so what's if, your? Uh... I was uh, what's say, your you shelter keep... situation looking like? I'm just kind of curious. You know, you got a seven pound base weight. That is amazing. Like, what's Thanks. in your pack? I'm d- I'm just kind of curious to know what's in your pack. Uh, just chips, just a whole bunch of chips, and uh, <laughs> and that's about it. No, I uh, I have a Z Pax Hexamid Solo Plus from 2011. And uh, I got it secondhand off the backpacking light forum. Somehow. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's still going strong. It looks pretty weathered, but it's still working after two throughs. And what are you carrying that in? What kind of pack? Uh, I've got a Palante Simple Pack. Ooh. I've been thinking so about a, getting one of those myself. Yeah? They're yeah. pretty good. Um, it's a, it's this, the 2.0, so it's the second edition. Um, and I think it's about... Th- 35 liters, including external pockets. Sounds about so, right. Yeah, so you've got to be quite particular about what you do and don't want, I think. 35 liters? God, I use that for an afternoon hike in the countryside in back here. <laughs> oh, no. 35 liters? Your pack was 35 liters on a through hike. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you carry a stove or, or do you go stoveless? No. No, no stove. I've never carried one. Um, I'm not even sure if I know how to start one, to be honest. Um, I could try. But, um, yeah, I've never carried one. What Always, did you do for um, coffee? I, I shook it up in a water bottle with some protein powder. Interesting. And, work, and worked on those gains, you know? <laughs> worked on, like, on leg day. Got real swole. <laughs> So what were you what were you eating? If you weren't cooking, what were you eating? Were you were you dry soaking or anything? Or were you just like just Yeah, I I dry soaked a little bit. Um sometimes it was too much of a hassle. I ate a lot of snacks. Okay. So a lot of uh chips and dried fruit and nuts and um like those squeezy applesauce packets. That was my obsession from my last hike. Um I tried to eat um good food as much as I could. So my first hike was a lot of junk food, and then the second I tried to incorporate as much proper real food as possible. So, Fozzie, I, I was uh, checking out uh, Heaps' blog uh, while you were asking your questions, and the subject of cold soaking came up, and I, I see that she's stoveless. And it says here that um, once, you get, uh, once you get to a certain level with the butt-chugging technique, if you can get the ramen up in there as well, it's a... <laughs> It's a, te- it's a technique known as, as warm soaking. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You can just soak it all day long that way, right? <laughs> Do your prep in the morning, That's and then it. by dinner time, you're good to go. That's it. <laughs> you think you'd still be hungry if you did that, though? If you did the butt chucky thing with food, do you think you'd still be hungry afterwards? Do you think you like, you know, your mouth would still be watering afterwards, or do you think it'd be like your, your hunger would be satiated? Do you think it would work? With, with ramen? With any food, really. I, I've been, I don't think it works like that. I, 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 I nominate Fozzie. I, name, I nominate Fozzie as our, our test that. subject. I was just thinking about that. There's a South Park episode, yeah, where they but, stuff food uh, up their butt to see if they, they crap out of their mouths. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> And they're just in the middle of the conversation and they'll pick up a waste basket and just... Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it becomes like everyday procedure for everybody. They're just like... Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> 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 nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I am... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um. uh. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, Gary. Gary, feel free to help out. I, I am. I am. I'm. I'm done with this conversation. I'm out. <laughs> uh, oh man! All right. I have no well, idea what to say next. I mean, I, I think we've had a pretty good run. You, you guys want to wrap this one up? We. I, I think. I think we could do that. Um, 
uh, we've, uh, if anybody wants to type a couple uh, last minute questions in the chat, we'll get we'll get to we'll see if we can squeeze one or two more in. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to take us on a slight diversion here uh, for something that we did a couple of episodes ago. I have an update for us. We had, um, let me get this here first. Okay. So uh, in February and in March, we talked about before where we had a few of our listeners who are out on the trail right now or getting ready for their long distance hikes who have been sending us in uh, a couple of little voice memos to kind of let us know how they're going. Uh, we've got uh, B&B Hikes, the AT, are still, they're out there on the trail right now, and I think I saw today that they were in the Smokies. Uh, we haven't got any audio updates from them uh, recently, but we did get one from our southbound hiker, a guy by the name of Jeffrey Wood. His trail name is Trees, and he sent us this note. It's not very long, and I just want to play it for you to give you guys an update on how uh, Jeffrey and his southbound hiker coming along. So... All right, so here is Jeffrey's update. This is about a minute and a half. Hey, stories from the trail. It's Jeffrey. I'm back again. Um, since the last time I talked to you, I've become a lot more decisive. 100% doing the Appalachian Trail later this year. Heading Sobo, leaving June 1st. Very excited about that. Woohoo! Last time I was still pretty 50 50 on whether or not I wanted to do it, but I'm all set for that now. Got all my gear, almost. I'm waiting on a puffy jacket to come in the mail, and I need to assemble a first aid kit. But aside from that, it's all good. Um, for training, I do uh, three miles of walking before I go to work, and then after work, I do another three. On the weekends, I do day hikes. There are a lot of good little mountains around my area for that. It's pretty nice. Planning on doing a 4,000-footer probably next week, so little preparation for the the harder mountains up in the whites going to be pretty good um, I haven't done a shakedown yet planning on doing that about mid-April or whenever the weather permits hard telling right now you know New England winters ha 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 um, and I have not shit in the woods yet so <laughs> kind of dreading that one but um yeah it's all going pretty well all right see ya all right, so in the note that Jeffrey sent along with that, he, he pointed out, I should have said before, that that noise you heard in the background is not static. He was standing next to a river while he was recording that. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I, I want to bring up something that he mentioned right at the end there. He said that he has not pooped in the woods yet, and he's kind of dreading that. And I've had conversations with other people who have gone on short hikes, like overnighters or two or three day hikes, who have gone the whole time without pooping in the woods at all because apparently some people are a little uh uncomfortable doing so and i was wondering if we, you know we could give jeffrey or any other hikers out there who might not be so confident about pooping in the woods some advice that they can use that might uh might make that a little bit easier for them does anybody have any any pooping advice they'd like to dispense yeah eat steak before you go when if, if i was going out for a night's hike i'd always have a steak for breakfast because it bungs me up and I don't need to go. And when I get back, I have a poo. <laughs> oh, oh! So your so your advice is actually how to avoid pooping in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, I don't do it deliberately, but I mean, sometimes if I'm going out for an overnight, I'm just like, I really don't need to want to shit in the woods. I'll, I'll just eat some steak, and then I'm good. <laughs> okay. Is there is it, is there I mean, is that a common thing? Is there anyone in the chat or you know any of you guys talking tonight who who particularly don't enjoy pooping in the woods? I was terrified to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before my through hike, that was probably one of my biggest fears. What was what was like that, having to poop in the woods? What was that first time like? Oh. My first time pooping in the woods. Um, fine. I guess it took a lot longer than I thought. You okay. know, it takes mm -hmm. a while. Get all set up, dig the hole, poop. Um, I think the biggest tip I would have for someone that's a bit worried about it is find a place where you're not you're in no way going to get discovered by someone. So you need to have like full privacy in terms of not having to worry that someone's going to walk up on you. Okay. Um, and also don't wait until the last second because there's nothing worse than pooping <laughs> and then having to dig the hole afterwards and then having to give it the little nudge in. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Not that I I've ever done that. 
No. I think that's pretty solid advice because my first time I had like people yelling at me like, Reptar, let's go. Like, we're yeah. all right. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> You're like, no. Yeah. 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 We're late. Pitch yeah. off. So, so not worrying that I was going to get discovered or, or something like that is, is a lot more calming than, you know, checking around everywhere thinking that someone's going to pop out from a switchback and just see you mid- mid squat okay all right cool yeah that's uh, that sounds like solid advice yeah because i think i think and it's also like one of those things that's like after you do it once or twice or a few times you know it just becomes second nature you know the fear oh, totally. goes away and you're and you're like all right you know i've done this before let's get down to business you know exactly all right. Well, I'm glad that we uh, I'm glad that we finished on I'm glad that we got plenty of poop talk in this episode and that at least <laughs> at least some of it will be useful to someone <laughs> because, you know, while while we do try our best to entertain, we also do kind of try to educate a little, <laughs> at least some. Right. <laughs> so in that regard, this has been a success. Um, heaps, it's just been so cool talking to you. You've been great. This is fun. Uh, just oh, thank you. as as we uh, as we sign out, can you remind uh, listeners one more time how they can find you online? Yeah, sure. So um, on Instagram, I'm at Wilderbound, uh, and then website dot com, and uh, soon I'll be starting a YouTube channel as well. And you cut same you, name. Your website cut out. Could you say that one more time, please? Oh, sorry. Wilderbound dot com. Wilderbound website. Dot com. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. And you can read all about uh, about Heaps' seven pound base weight and some other really, <laughs> really good stories. I mean, your blog is is it's full of just really engaging stories and great pictures. And I definitely recommend people go there. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Heaps, for joining us. You were hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I feel like you all know. Me. I feel like you all know a, a lot about me now. A lot, like all of my embarrassing stories. I mean, we just jumped right into the just the gnarliest of it too, thanks to Twerk. Who, thanks, um, Twerk. Yeah, Twerk sent a <laughs> sent a note about mid show. He was he was actually hiking while we were talking, and he said he was about to lose his signal, so he was uh, not not with us for the second half of the show. Hopefully, he listens to this. Anything you want to say to Twerk while he's not here? While he's not here. Yeah, let's talk about him um, behind his back. Pardon? We, we can say things about him behind his back. Oh, true. Yeah, definitely. Um, no, okay. So I'll, I'll tell everyone now while he's not listening. Twerk is one of the most genuine hikers you'll ever meet. He's incredibly uh, generous and kind. And if you do bump into him on trail, um, make sure you say hello because he's definitely worth your time. You're so nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell that to him while he's actually listening. Oh, no, no, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I guess the last thing before we go, we always like to mention that Stories from the Trail has a Patreon uh, where listeners can go to support the show and make sure that we continue bringing you informative and entertaining poop talk and more. That address is patreon.com slash stories from the trail. Germans need not apply. <laughs> <laughs> You're still Damn stuck on there, right? <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, is... uh, we should, Gary, we should get Heaps back on some point. It was a good one. She should come back. You should come back, Heaps. I agree. Oh, thank yeah. you. I'd love to. Yeah, you've passed the cool test. Um, so, Could you understand what I was saying? Uh, I'm sorry, what? Oh, my God. <laughs> so... You've played me. I've been done. Um, played like a fiddle. Yeah. Uh, for, hey, for, for real, though, uh, our, this Discord channel is not just for recording the show. This thing's running 24-7, and you'll see throughout the week, hikers are jumping on here and helping each other uh, find trails, recommend gear, or just you know just chat with other hikers. Uh, the link to join our Discord, it's free. That's in our show notes. If you're listening to this on the podcast, that means you're probably holding a phone in your hand right now. Scroll down a little bit. See that link? Boom, you're in. Okay, and I think that's all That's all I've got in terms of announcements. Uh, and look at that. We are right on time to the minute. Good job, guys. Woohoo! I had a good time. This was fun. Well, thanks. I, I think it was more fun because you were here. Oh, stop it! <laughs> keep, keep us up to keep us up to date with the um, with the book as well, heaps. And if you need um, 
any help with the self-publishing thing, then um, ask Gary. No. <laughs> how, no, how many, we'd be happy to help you. Yeah, yeah, if you how, want some advice or whatever, shoot us an email or, or something. How I'm many sure times? We, how many times have you done you. this, Keith? Uh, well, the self-publishing yeah. thing. Quite a few. Uh, right? Five, five books, I Dang. think. But you've wow. done two, so. Mm -hmm. Does it? Does it get easier? It's actually getting harder. It's just getting more involved by, uh, by the month. There's just uh, there's just so many so much stuff you have to catch up with in the background. You know what it's like, but yeah, it does. That, you've got to kind of keep up with it. That's why um, I stopped it too. <laughs> you know what it's like, Gary. It's like people think you. <laughs> It's about 5% writing books and 95% all the other stuff that goes with it. <laughs> yeah, pe people here... Do you the... not enjoy the other stuff that goes with it? I kind of enjoy some of it. Some of it is... I really can't be asked with, um, but mm -hmm. it, it's not sort of necessary. You don't really get much choice in it. Some of it I enjoy. I enjoy like, the marketing stuff and some of the advertising, but... It, um... it, it feels a bit like having a job interview every day of your life. Yeah, that's a good oh. way of putting it. Oh my god, that sounds dreadful. <laughs> that sounds horrible. <laughs> yeah, but but there's there's fame and fan mail and you know my <laughs> I don't have room for my all these Lamborghinis in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> None of that is true. <laughs> it's very fulfilling though. It really it really is, especially you know if if you do self publish. Um, and, and Fozzie, back me up. The, the The sense of accomplishment is really, you know, one of the main driving factors. Like just holding a book in your hand and seeing your name on it, just it kind it, it kind of tickles a little. Yeah, holding your first book is like it's uh, it's like no other feeling. I mean, even even when uh, when you sort of write your second or your third or your fourth or whatever, and you get the first proof through, it's still like I don't know. It's just like this childish, giddy excitement. It's a bit. Uh, there's, there's no other feeling like it, really. It's well worth it. That's awesome. I feel like you're kicking my ass. I really need to knuckle <laughs> no, down. We're not, and... we're, not, we're, not, we're not kicking your no, ass. No, no, in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> okay. Okay. I definitely do. Um, I think Gary would probably back me up as well. Um, I mean, given the two options, um, self-publishing every time. For sure. Okay. Yep. That's good to know. Yep. Cre you get creative control and... Uh, a, a bigger share of the pie. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But you have to you have to bake the whole pie yourself. <laughs> but then I get to use the ingredients that I want. Sometimes there's a little poop in the pie. Oh my god, <laughs> that's great. <Really? laughs> and on that note, my friends, it has been a wonderful evening talking to you all. And thanks, everybody. Thank you heaps once again. And thank you, everybody listening in. I am signing out, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Or day. Good night. I'm also going to bed. This is Fuzzy out. It's been a pleasure. Stories from the Trail is a production of the Trek.co. Zach Davis, editor in chief. Each episode is recorded in front of a live internet audience. Uh, you can be part of that internet audience if you care to join us on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, there's a link in the show notes that tells you everything you need. Our music is by Lee Rosevere. Your hosts are Green Giant, Voldemort, and Reptar! You can find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those places. Just look for stories from the trail. It's probably us. The show was recorded, mixed, and edited by me, Gary Sizer, in Blanket Fort Studios, which is just me in my basement, with a blanket over my head. Thanks for listening. And there you have it. You're all caught up on stories from the trail. Right? Mm, I'm not so sure. 
If you're listening to this episode on the day it came out, there are still four full episodes of the show that you haven't heard yet. How can you get them? Well, those episodes are available right now to patrons of the show who support what we do by going to patreon.com slash stories from the trail. For as little as $1 a month, you can get the raw audio of these recordings the day after they are produced rather than waiting an entire month like the rest of us. Hope you consider being one of those listeners. Thanks. I did. Yeah. I just bit down on that bite valve and it just straight back up. Um, <laughs> 